The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Horacio Manuel Cartesiara, President of the Republic of Paraguay. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. En nombre de la Asamblea General, on behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Horacio Manuel Cartesiara, President of the Republic of Paraguay, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Heads of state and government, distinguished delegates, 70 years ago on the ruins of the Second World War, the United Nations was born with the purpose of maintaining world peace and security and promoting cooperation between all nations across the globe. The Republic of Paraguay was one of the 51 states that signed the founding act, the UN Charter, which has become a historic contribution to the international community. For Paraguay, the right to equality and respect for sovereignty among states, both large and small, justifies our hoping for the full consolidation of this organization. Mr. President, I express my best wishes for the success in your performance at the outset of this, the 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly. As well, I'd like to express my satisfaction at the work of uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, whom we welcomed in my country in February this year. His visit um, assured once again the strong links and the commitment with the organization multilateralism. And I take this opportunity to reiterate to the Secretary General my gratitude for recognizing the work and the results of our government's fight against poverty, as well as his appreciation for the abundant and renewable clean energy that Paraguay is blessed with. Mr. President, the strengthening of this organization should aim specifically at the construction of a truly fair world, one of solidarity with the face of human dignity at a universal scale. This entails overcoming inequities and inequalities that still overshadow the world order which will be a reality as long as the effective enforcement of international law is achieved and the dream of a peaceful era and one of well-being shared among all our nations is fulfilled. With regards to Paraguay, the main objective of our government is to reduce poverty in the short term through public policies to eradicate poverty. Therefore, we maintain and are increasing the scope of assistance programs, especially those focusing on extreme poverty and through tied aid. The generation of opportunities, employment, decent housing, respect, equity, and access to education, health, and high-quality basic public services constitutes the arsenal of our tireless struggle to eradicate extreme poverty in our country. These programs provide comprehensive and permanent solutions to enable people to become autonomous and self-fulfilled. We strive for an inclusive economic growth in our country so that progress reaches all Paraguayans. 
we are encouraged by the fact that Paraguay is one of the countries with the highest economic growths in the region, which has been achieved by Im um, improving our production capacity and through fiscal discipline and through competitiveness. The value added of our raw materials, which requires domestic and international investments, are exponentially adding in the to the construction industry, which is rapidly changing the very profile of our cities. Similarly, we aim to expand and modernize the infrastructure works with the conviction that by transforming the country, we are reducing poverty. And we continuously maintain the importance of our youth in our country. Paraguay is a young country with 75% of our population being below 40 years old. And this represents a valuable human capital. I welcome the enthusiasm of young people, particularly Paraguayan students who, in the past couple of days, united their voices in the pursuit of transparency within public administration and through quality education. We trust in the immense potential of our youth and we firmly believed in the importance of access to high quality education to achieve full progress for our nation. That is why we created a scholarship program with an investment of 1,500 Paraguayan professionals can have the opportunity to complete master's degrees and doctorates in some of the best universities around the world. Our government committed with transparency and fighting corruption scourges that undermine the basis of society has recently on the past September the 17th set in place the legal instrument that regulates the law on free access to public information and governmental transparency this allows all citizens to exercise their constitutional right to be informed we promote a culture of transparency and from the beginning of our term of office, we have ratified the fact and said that may the public be public. Those national efforts will not be enough without international policies that promote effective cooperation, equitable ch exchanges, and adequate complementarity between countries and regions. Now, these three conditions, cooperation, exchange, and complementarity, urgently require a paradigm shift and requires that the United Nations should assist in these international policies. We are living in the age of globalization. Technology has put the whole world within a few keystrokes length. We are almost instantly aware of what happens halfway across the world, which affects us directly and personally. We live connected. Now, within this context, how does one aboard, get on board the train of development? The 21st century requires a key asset, and that is qu the qualified human factor, the new challenges are designed to the extent of qualified individuals where their fitness for survival is directly related to the degree of their real and effective academic training. Following the political and industrial revolutions and as a result of globalization, the knowledge revolution has taken place. Therefore, at this time, the human element remains the most important and essential resource, but provided that men are sufficiently trained. Education is the key. Therefore, it's imperative that UNESCO be threatened, thre strengthened. The developed countries are obliged, through fairness and ethics, to make an increased contribution for its financing.
quality education and scientific research should not only be deemed the patrimony of, uh, patrimony of some countries, but a public good of universal nature. Mr. President, we witness with great concern today a huge and endless exodus of families fleeing conflicts as our brothers are living in Syria and other countries due to the violence of radical and intolerant groups. We cannot turn our backs on this human tragedy that is currently occurring. We call upon our organization to appeal to member states, in particular those in this region, to adopt the necessary measures in favor of the most vulnerable sectors of civil society. Paraguay reaffirms that non-proliferation and arms control are essential factors for international peace and security, and they are the guarantee that the most vulnerable countries can rely on in order to secure a sustainable economic and social development. We thank the member states of the International Atomic Energy Agency for their confidence in our country, having been elected unanimously to its Board of Governors. From here, from this position, we will act with absolute impartiality and balance in order to promote the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Another major issue of concern is the preservation of the environment. Paraguay, like many developing countries, gives uh, priority in its public policies to preserving the integrity and diversity of the natural heritage, which we inherited from our ancestors, and we are aware of the great responsibility of all humanity to safeguard the resources upon which their existence depends. It is with this awareness and commitment that Paraguay implements rational management of natural resources and promotes the use of renewable sources of clean energy in harmony with nature and in pursuit of development. The whole world has heard the urgent call of His Holiness Pope Francis as repeated last Friday in front of this plenary to protect our common home and for urgent dialogue on the way we are building the future of the planet and to unite the whole human family in searching for a sustainable and comprehensive development. In a masterful way, the Holy Father described climate change as a global issue with major environmental, social, economic, distributional and political dimensions and he posed it as one of the current challenges for humanity whose worst impacts will probably fall upon the developing countries over the next decades. He further argued that the worsening of the environment and society affects particularly the weakest in the world and that that inequity affects not only individuals but entire countries forcing us to think about the issue of an ethical international relations. With a view to the upcoming summit on climate change scheduled for later this year in Paris, we must redouble our efforts and ratify our serious political commitment to mitigate, alleviate and reverse the devastating consequences of climate change. The landlocked condition of a country has its relevance and to address this situation we propose, together with 32 other countries in the same situation, a special and differential treatment from more developed countries in order to allow us to improve our competitiveness without high tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers. Real integration also entails the transfer of knowledge and capital investment and simultaneously goes through a balance in terms of trade and bilateral and multilateral treaties. 
Indeed, the reduction of asymmetries depends on economic, social, and cultural integration with a view to a common destiny. Not in leonine policies in which weaker countries have to bear the biggest share of the burden. Mr. President, democracy is a political system in expansion and it is sustained on the indivisible principles of equality, freedom and sovereignty. If we want democracy to rule within our own republics, it's appropriate that we should also want it for the United Nations to ensure that there is democracy equity in geographical representation within the United Nations system. In that sense, Paraguay supports the process to reform the organization in order to strengthen the General Assembly as the most representative body within the organization, restoring its legitimate powers, which must be interdependent with those of the Security Council according to the purposes enshrined in the United Nations Charter of 1945. Paraguay is following with great interest the process that is being carried out in the context of the reform and expansion of the Security Council and considers that it's necessary to improve their working methods and that the decisions be made more transparent while also listening to the views and vision of member of states that are not members of the Council regarding issues related to international peace and security. This will undoubtedly have an impact on them. Paraguay welcomes the efforts undertaken by the government of the Republic of Ch China, Taiwan, in order to reduce tension across the Taiwan Strait, which contributed greatly to ensure peace and stability in East Asia. Our government advocates continuing pragmatic dialogue and mutually beneficial interaction between both sides of the Straits that also have the recognition of the international community. Similarly, Paraguay reaffirms its commitment to support the peace process in the Sister Republic of Colombia initiated by President Juan Manuel Santos and wishes that the conflict that has claimed thousands of innocent lives be resolved soon. We welcome the agreement reached the, on September 23rd last in, uh, in Havana. This signals an important step towards achieving the long-awaited peace in that noble nation linked to my country by honorable historical ties. Mr. President, among the priorities for moving towards a more balanced, fair and dignified world is the promotion of human rights. For us, rights to freedom, free assembly, human integrity and quality of life are essential. While discrimination, either racial, religious, political or gender-based, endure, we shall continue to have a deficit in terms of human rights. It is with this vision that Paraguay has put its efforts and has acceded for the first time to the Human, to the human Rights Council, where it holds one of the vice chairs. It is for the social dimension that we give to these inalienable rights that we are aiming to join the United Nations Economic and Social Council for the period 2019-2021. Paraguay is brimming with youth and this inspires us vigorously to promote the active participation of young people in building a more just and free society, in addition to the protection of the rights of children and women in our country. Mr. President, fate has put us in a huge responsibility to govern and represent our nations in times when international solidarity becomes imperative. Paraguay brings from the beating heart of America a commitment to continue caring and participating in that beautiful dream that emerged 70 years ago to strengthen peace and security in the world. Today's reality also calls upon us more than ever before to protect our common home, our damaged 
and mistreated planet. Let's fully assume this challenge so that we can be able to bequeath to future generations a world at peace, one which is fairer, healthier, more inclusive, and a better place to live. May God bless you all. Thank you very much.